Christmas, three days before Christmas. Miserable weather and everything else. But we should have gone east for Christmas. At least we'd have had snow. You'll be all right, Edna. Dan's a good driver. I wish we'd given her a bigger car. Hello. Yes. Yes, Thomas Bollinson speaking. Police Department. Where? What's the trouble, officer? Your daughter, Jan, asked us to call you. Four of them in the car together, they hit a pedestrian. He's dead. Tom, what happened? Jan had an accident. Is she all right? Oh, where? How is she? And not a scratch on any of them in the car. We're holding all of them, naturally. Yes, yeah, she's all right. Let me talk to her. Let me talk to him. I told you, she's all right. Officer, please, go on. I'm afraid it's manslaughter or vehicular homicide. And until you arrange bail with me. Yes, yes, I'll take care of it. Now, who was driving? That's one of the problems. Your daughter and her three friends, they say they don't remember. Was Jan driving? Nobody knows. Nobody knows? Just a minute, officer. Edna, please let me handle this. Now, officer, tell me exactly where Nolan is. How could nobody know who's driving a car? Oh, yes, 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 I know. Well, I'm leaving as soon as I can. I'll be there in about an hour or so. Officer, had they been drinking? Drinking? Yes, sir, they admit to having what they call a snort or two. And when the driver admits it, the sentence is, well, you know. Was she, Tom? Were they? Thank you, officer. Yeah, they had a drink or two. Thank you, officer. Now, tell I my daughter. I don't believe it. They admit it. Now, officer, tell my daughter I'm on my way. And what kind of a car was it? Oh, thank you. Terrible for her. Oh, Tom. Honey, don't worry about it. Well, it wasn't Jan's car, so she wasn't driving. Well, let me go it's with you. It's all right. Mr. Griswold, there's a long distance call for you. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Griswold. Oh, Tom Bollington. Pleasure and a privilege, Tom. Merry, merry greetings of the season. I hope business has been good for you at the store as it is for me. Uh, 
now. I get it. Now it's rough. Your daughter? No. I, I got it. Jan, J-A-N. They're in custody now. 15 minutes, Tom. I'll have the wheels turning in 15 minutes. something that shows, you know. The mark of Cain isn't going to suddenly appear on our foreheads. Are you sure? I think I feel something growing. You're going to study law, aren't you? Doesn't it say pre-law in your card? Don't you know that you're all guilty of obstructing justice? Officer, now if all of us went to jail, or just even one of us, is that going to bring back that poor chap who's dead as a mackerel? An eye for an eye is not justice, it's atavistic nonsense. You're flat, Willis. Mr. Ballington is here. Okay. Send him in. Officer, I'm Mr. Ballington. I'd like to speak to those young people alone at the moment. Uh, no, 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 just a minute. Now look, Mr. Ballington, a man's been killed. Maybe it's manslaughter, maybe second degree, maybe homicide. But somebody's going to get charged for something. Now, so far, those kids haven't told us a thing. They keep sticking with us, none of us remember nothing. I understand. Well, don't worry, I'll talk to them. I'll find out who was driving. Be better for all concerned. Daddy, we're in a jail full of pipe smokers. I've always associated pipes with big brains. I'm about to reconsider. Oh, Jan, Jan. I got here as fast as I could. I'm fine. I hope you weren't too worried. I would have called you myself, but they have some routine of their own. Their own little way of doing things. Hey, how about those cigarettes? Oh, Daddy, these are my friends. Althea Winton, Willis Marjorie, and Paul Durbin. Well, what about all your parents? Have they been informed? <laughs> Mine will be so pleased. Pleased? Forgive my natural high spirits, Mr. Ballington. Dad, suffice it to say at the moment, you are much the closest of any of our parents. Althea lives in New York. I am an orphan. Paul's on scholarship to the art department. He's a graduate student. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, yeah, thank you. Thank you. From all of us, you are a true St. Bernard. <laughs> uh, you think you could get us out of here, sir? They've been murmuring something like, no bail until we talk, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I don't think the news of the Bill of Rights has reached them here yet. Three of you can get out of here right now. Oh, I understand what you're doing, protecting each other. One for all and all for one, but you carried it far enough. Now, who was driving? We can't remember, Dad. We just can't remember. Total lapse. Total non-recall. I'm sorry, sir. We cannot remember. That's right. Beats me. It was just as much the man's fault anyway. He should have expected to skid slick pavement like that. I'm really a very nice girl. Everybody says so. <laughs> Officer. Is there a room where I can talk to my daughter alone for a moment, please? Yes, there is, Mr. Blinder. You can all be charged with conspiring to obstruct justice. You realize that, don't you? 
To answer my own question of a moment or two ago, I guess there isn't any chance of us getting out of here tonight or in the morning. Once they charge you, I can probably get them to let you off on bail. I, uh, I made a phone call. I pulled a few strings. God bless strings. <sighs> and those who pull them. <laughs> You may not believe it, but I pulled those strings with great regret. Sorry once again? Come on, Jan. I don't believe I like your friends very much. But they are my friends, Dad. My very good Mr. friends. Mr. Bollington, we received a request to make the young people as comfortable as possible. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to the Policeman's Pension Fund. Peace on Earth. Goodwill toward policemen. Anything I can do to make you kids more comfortable? With a reason, that is. I'm really very sorry about all this, Daddy. I know it's a mess for you and Mother. Okay, honey, I know it isn't your fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. I mean, it wasn't your car. I know you weren't driving. How can you know that, Dad? Because I know you, honey. These other young people are strangers to me. But Jan Bollington doesn't take a life and act as if she drops some salt on the floor or something. Broken a shoestring, an inconvenience. Dad. Buffy is in a lot of trouble with her family, and Willis is about to hit his for an expensive trip to Europe this summer. Paul doesn't have a bean. We chipped in and bought him that sweater he's wearing. Daddy was wandering around in a windbreaker as thin as a piece of newspaper. Could you go bail? Be the money bags for everyone. Could you do that for me? What kind of trouble? What? You said Althea was in trouble. God bless strings, Althea. Dad, these are my friends. What kind of trouble was she in? I don't know. Some little thing like charging too much at a store or something like that. Not a driving accident. As a matter of fact, yes. But what difference does that make? It could have happened to anyone. But it didn't happen to anyone. It happened to you. What about all that talk of cutting down on smoking? I tried and failed. I guess I'm just evil and depraved, a thrill murderess and a tobacco addict. Now you answer my question. Were you driving that car? Tell me you weren't driving that oh, car! Dad! My friends and I made an agreement, a promise. We agreed not to tell anyone. It's a point of honor. A point of honor? A man's dead and it's a point of honor? Whose car did you use? We all borrowed one from a mutual friend. You won't get any leads there. Why didn't you use yours? I never got the antifreeze put in. Anyway, it's not really comfortable for four. Had you been drinking with your friends? A drink. Have you suddenly got something against drinking, Dad? And why were we all so late last night? It doesn't take that long to reach here from the university. Well, that's the way accidents are, I guess. Daddy, I love you. I love you, Dad. But me... Will you do me a great big favor? Don't call me Dad for another year or two. I don't like the sting you put into it. You sound like a jazz musician addressing a very square stranger. Have you got something against jazz musicians, Father? No. But I don't particularly want my daughter to be one. Okay. But will you manage the bail and everything for us? Ah, oh, 
me life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Darling, is she all right? Really all right. Sounded so funny last night. I thought there was something you didn't want me to know. Did you find a place to sleep? Did you find a hotel? I'm all right. She's fine, honey. There's not a mark on her. No, I've got to clean up. Well, then it is going to be a good Christmas. A real family Christmas. Yeah. It is the season to be jolly. Well, Jan wasn't driving then. It'll never win any architectural awards, kids, but here it is. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. <laughs> We're in the high rent district for all of Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, Mother. Dad's been mother henning us all. I'm perfectly preserved. Good to be home. Merry Christmas. Oh, I'm so happy, so thrilled. Mother, these are my friends. This is Althea Winton. Her mother grows those beautiful roses, remember? Oh, yes, Althea. We must talk about roses while you're here. Yeah, roses. What's that? Uh, it's a recorder. Huh? Willis Maudry. I met him in Bermuda last Easter. Well, it's terribly nice of you to put us up, Mrs. Ballington, and we'll try to get out of your hair after the hearing. Oh, don't be silly. Stay as long as you like. My husband and I just rattle around in this house. Uh, that's a recorder, too. Oh. Paul Durbin, Mother. Hello, Paul. Is that roast beef I smell cooking? Yes, it is. Our Susan has an enormous roast in the oven. She could hardly get it in. Well, if you need any help, let me know. Practically all my relatives are in the restaurant business. I was brought up under a gas range. Oh. Paul's always hungry or thirsty. In fact, we could all use a drink now. I know Paul could. He hasn't had one since we left Newland. Well, fine. Why don't we all go in here? All this beautiful wall space. I don't suppose you'd like to buy some early Durban landscape. Mr. Durban! Call him Paul, Dad. Did I understand, Jan? You stopped for a drink on your way here? You were driving and you stopped for a drink? Tom! We all had one small snort. All of us. A man is being buried in the morning who might well be alive today. If whoever was driving had had quicker reactions. Tom, it's Christmas time. This is a Christmas party. Now, how many times have you driven after taking a drink or two? Do you think I would if I'd run over a man while drinking? Tom, please, I don't want you to refer to this again today. Not again today. Please, for me. Yes, Thomas Barlington speaking. Just a moment. Mr. Griswold, your long-distance call is ready. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. Tom. Marty Griswold. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the boys dug up something I thought you ought to know. What is it? Well, this isn't easy, even. I might as well lay it on the line. Just before the accident, all four of the kids stayed together in a motel, the resto motel. Two rooms for the four of them. Is your man positive? I can't believe it. Well, it, it's true. Now, the two girls may have shared a bedroom, but Tom, listen, whatever happens, character and reputation are going to influence the authorities. Yes. Yeah, yes, of course. Um, if I were you, I'd uh, wander on up there and have a talk with them before somebody else does, if you know what I mean. And it's two and a half miles east of Newland, Tart Atterbury, the Resto Motel. Yes. I understand. Thank you. Mother says please join the party. We all do. 
When you all were at the Resto Motel, you and Althea shared a bedroom. I'll leave it here. Jan, I asked you a question. I want you to answer it. Now, what was going on up there? Why didn't you tell me about it? Nothing illegal or immoral or illicit happened up there. Dad, that hurts. I mean, Father. You tell me what was going on and who was driving it. I don't want him under my roof with my family. It was Paul Durbin, wasn't it? He's the oldest and most self-assured. He talked to three others into protecting I can't the... say anything about that. Can't you appreciate that? You want me to think on him. I want you to stop making smarty pants answers and tell me the truth. Are you going to or aren't you? No. Yes, you are, so help me, Jen. Or what? Oh! Oh, what are you doing to her? What, what's happening? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Baby, are you all right? Did he I'm hurt you? I'm all right, Mother. No, he didn't hurt me. Do you paint grand, or do you paint little small paintings, she said. And I bowed, sort of like this. And I said, Madam, with Durbin, it is not the size of my paintings. It is the altitude they hang at. <laughs> <laughs> Twin or double? What? Twin beds or double beds? You get your choice. Were you on duty night before last? Did you lose something? I want to find out about some people who were here. Got a subpoena? Police will be here. It's about an automobile accident that happened to my daughter and some friends after they left. It's important to find out what condition they were in, who was driving, and established that the room assignments were perfectly decent, which I know they were. It's worth $100 to me. Got a business card? Get a wholesale rate at your store, Mr. Uh, Bollington? Within limits. Cops are already here. Man was on duty that night, uh, McMurdy, the night clerk. Uh, he's taking a little Christmas trip to San Francisco. He'll be back uh, tonight, 6 o'clock. Do the police know when he'll be back? Sure. 50 bucks is enough for McMurdy. Don't spoil another man's employee, okay? I'll do the same for you sometime. Merry Christmas, Mr. Bollington. Come on, come on. You three defendants, sit over here. Mr. Bollington, in this informal session, you can be present, but please, no remarks. You want to sit over there? Are you the attorney? Samuel Franklin, a riff kind of Franklin and Litchfield. Bollington has asked me to help out. So far, I'm not even sure I'm going to take the case. But for the moment, let me say this. No real purpose can be served by browbeating these three young people or their friend. Mr. Uh... Maudry. Yes, Mr. Maudry, where is he? I realize this is an informal hearing, nevertheless, certain procedures. I question Maudry separately. We found a witness who will swear that... Well, it's all over now. I have a witness, and Mr. Maudry has made certain admissions. Now, look, I'm a father myself. You're nice kids, you're not criminals. I want to give you a chance to clear yourselves of the suggestion of conspiracy and collusion. Now, we know who was driving. All right, Durbin, let's start with you. Give you a chance to show a better attitude. Will you confirm it? 
I told you I forgot. All right, Durbin. Maudry and my witness have definitely identified you as a driver of that death car. Yes, you got me. I was driving, Nora. Me too. Can I have a smoke? Me too. And if you'll bring Willis Marjorie back in, I'm sure he'll confess too. You're three pretty cool customers, aren't you? We're friends. We like each other and we understand each other. If one of us goes to jail, that isn't going to bring the dead back to life, is it? All right, Maudry, over here. Willis Maudry, you've been identified as the driver of the car. Willis, he's you. right. Now, you be quiet. Oh, I see. Well, I don't understand how you could nail me with it, because... Frankly, Paul Durbin was doing the driving. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now it comes back to me. Actually, Althea was driving. Why, Althea, I can see you behind that wheel just as clear. Now you listen here, all of you. You think you've got this set up your own way. All right, all right. We don't know who was driving. But each one of you is deliberately obstructing justice, and that charge itself Give is... Give it up, sir. You can't make an obstructing justice charge stick against us. That would be coercion to try and make us testify against ourselves. You're just gonna have to let us go. You know it, and I know it. Mr. Franklin knows it, too. Jan, where did you all learn to be such sly little lawyers? You sent me to college to learn, didn't you? <sighs> Next step's up to the court. Dear Santa, all I want for Christmas is the late Clarence Darrow. Counselor, I'll give you 15 minutes to make some sense out of this. You even wiped off the steering wheel, didn't you? Regular master criminals. They did look for fingerprints then. Of course they did. Hey, how about that? I don't think you bright young children know what this is all about. Tom? He's trying so hard. He sure is a trier, isn't he? Ladies and gentlemen, I have only one further question. Yes? yes. Who was driving? <laughs> <laughs> Bollington. Uh, I was here this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're the $50 man. That's right. Four young college people, two boys and two girls, were registered here. Yeah, they looked young and had bottles. I asked everyone for their identification, so I got the right names. Two rooms? Yeah, that's right. Well, the young girls uh, shared a cabin, of course. Oh, now, wait a minute, mister. I can't do anything like that. No, they, they was registered as Mr. and Mrs., and these register cards are all numbered. I, I can't destroy the cards. Well, perhaps they were registered as Mr. and Mrs., but they... Look, the blonde was with this Maudry fella, and the ponytail brunette, she was with Paul Durbin. That's the way they registered, and that's the way they split up. I even served the mice. Oh. Do you mind closing the door? This little heater of ours ain't up to heating the whole outdoors. How long were they here? Oh, four or five hours, not over five. There was an accident. 
Now, this is important. Two blocks down the street, they hit a man. The question of who was driving is very important to a lot of people. The man they hit died. Yeah. Well, I'll close the door myself. Mr. McMurney, did you see who was driving when they left here? Oh, yeah. They passed right under the neon sign. I saw her loud and clear. Her? One of the girls was driving? The one with the ponytail. When you ask me, pal, listen, I... Have you got any children? I got a next wife somewhere. She tells me we had a kid, but <laughs> who knows? A young girl makes a mistake. You try all her life, from her first breath, to save her from measles, pneumonia, croup, accidents. Try to bring her intact to a, a decent young man. She makes an error along the way. Look, mister, this. That brunette with a ponytail is my daughter, my only daughter, and I, I only want to, to... You're really hurting, ain't you? Police will be back soon. They were here when you were off duty. They were asking who was driving. It would mean a great deal to me if you didn't know. Well, I got a pretty good relationship with the cops around here. Would you be interested in the retail business? Merchandising, department stores? No, 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 no. Work doesn't interest me at all. Money does. Money does. Have a vacancy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We do. I need a double for me and my wife. Yes. Register right here. Thank you. We stayed here before. Nice place. Thank you. Thank Three you. cabins down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Looking out there, I couldn't see very clearly. How can you be sure my daughter was driving? You don't trust me. Not particularly. She was brunette. She had this goofy ponytail. She had a funny, relaxed way of driving. Sits back in the seat and holds the wheel like from behind it. I taught her to drive when she was very small for the size of the car. $1,000 cash that maybe I couldn't see out so well. That's what I'll tell my friends on the force. You'll have to give me till the day after tomorrow. No, no. 1000 cash money. But it's 7 o'clock, Christmas Eve. Yeah, but you're the kind of a guy that has friends that, that have a lot of money to burn, spending it on Christmas shopping. Who, who are you stalling? A 1000 bucks that's peanuts for a daughter, right? And if these cops come back before you do, I, I, I got to tell them the truth. Look, mister, if I was you, I'd go hustle my friends for some cash. Honey, 
Honey, your dad's attending Franklin call. The hearing's been put off till the day after Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> That's when he'll decide which one of us to charge and what for. I've got 50 bucks in my pocket. Let's get out of here right now. Just you and me somewhere. Oh, I love it. I love it. Darling, it's what I want. For Christmas Eve, Mom and Dad really care about this holly and mistletoe propaganda. You're a big girl now. You're supposed to be my woman. Your parents hate me, and I return the compliment. Do we leave together or do I leave alone? Together, together. I take your shower and pack and let's cut out. They don't hate you. Nobody hates you, darling. Maybe they don't understand you. They just never met anybody like you. Tell Althea and Willis. They'll probably want to leave, too. And all I say is, hello, Mom. Merry Christmas to you and Dad, and farewell. They gave you the mink you wanted. They tried all their lives, Paul. It's not their fault if I can't... I don't seem to be on the same planet. Is it your fault? No, it's not mine either. <gasps> Listen. Oh, it's nice to hear music and laughter in the house again. Jan. Upstairs, I guess. Jan. Jan, it's me. allowed one thing dirty or filthy under this roof. We're married. We've been married three months. I'm Mrs. Paul Durbin. We're married. We were going to tell you before that other thing happened. Please don't make it any harder. It's hard enough now. Get out of here. Leave me alone. Come on, Jen. Do what he says. Leave him alone. What's bugging you two? Arlington just found out about Jan and me. Let's get the car loaded up. What happened? He walk in on it or something? 15 minutes, Althea. We've got 15 minutes to leave. Now, come on, let's cut. Quick, like a bunny, darling. Hop, hop, hop. Oh, Susan, would you hold this under the hot water a little longer? It still won't fit. I wonder where they all are. I thought they'd all be down here for eggnog. Good evening, 
Mr. Wellington. Oh, we, uh, we thought we'd all drive into a... Well, anyway, get started on the throughway before it gets too crowded. You know, the holiday traffic and all. You're going to say goodbye to your hostess, aren't you? Oh, yeah, of course we were. You know, Ms. Bollington's gone to quite a bit of trouble about dinner. You're going to stay for dinner, aren't you? Well, it's been a couple of rough days for all of us. Do you ever look at it our way? I don't think any of you four ever looks at anything except your way. Now, Mr. Bollington, I don't have to take that from you. You're on my bail. My signature. You'll have to take a lot from me, Mr. Marjorie. Okay, all right. I guess I see a kind of old-fashioned logic to what you say. Sir. Sir. Join the group. We don't have any secrets anymore. Is that a bottle of scotch? That it is. You want to crack it open? Celebrate everything we have to celebrate. Jan is a wonderful girl, Mr. Bollington. Sure. And so are you. And Willis is a fine lad. Fine, upstanding young people, all of you. I wonder how a pack of unfeeling, conscienceless dogs would act. Now, Mr. Bollington, there are two things that are keeping me from hitting you. One is that you paid for my bail, as you pointed out. And the other is, uh, I think you're a lot stronger than I am. I hope you'll be very happy, Jan, Mrs. Durbin. Edna, would you like to meet your new son-in-law before he sneaks off into the night? Dad. Dad. I don't know what else to call you. You're a married woman now. Married three months. Maybe you're even pregnant on your way to being a mother. And you've killed a man. You were driving that car. We can't remember who was driving the car. So there's no way anybody else could know who was driving. What was that noise? What's going on up there? Did something break? Our little girl no. has just Mother, told... I have something to tell you. Something exciting. I'm so thrilled. Paul Durbin and I were married. You what? M married? You mean, really? You and Paul? Paul, the one without the tie. D-U-R-B-I-N. Yes, Paul. Well, it's just wonderful. Smashing. Smashing occasion in every way. Happiest night of my life. Well, now, I want you to tell me all about it, and when you met, and how, and, and, uh... Oh, Susan, at the door. My, what a lovely Christmas present. Yes. God bless us, everyone. Are there any more out there like you? Oh, there's a whole generation, sir. Except that we're just a little bit cooler. And when Paul saw me on campus, he asked me out that night, didn't you? What did you want? Where did you have your first date? Paul showed me about 200 of his own etchings. So naturally, I can see you'd want to get married. Look, Mr. Bollington, I know you're not overjoyed. Pardon me, Mr. Bollington. There's a man to see you, but he won't give his name. Oh, come in. Come in. Merry Christmas. Come in. Merry Christmas, folks. Familiar face. All right. What's he doing here? God bless him, Althea. He's one of those strings. Tom, why don't you offer your friend a, a cup of Christmas cheer? After all, we have so much to celebrate. Listen, could I talk to you for a second? Talk away, right now. Well, look, they, they came by, see, but I told them I couldn't tell them anything tonight because I had to go and see a sick friend. My brother's relieving me. Did you, did you get the money together? Not yet. Yeah, well, look, I'll take a check. See, I don't want to hurt anybody. Ah, oh, the old Christmas spirit, huh, Mr. McMurdy? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. What does he want? A check. Oh, is that all? Miss McMurdy, this is my wife. You've met everybody else here, haven't you? Merry Christmas, Mr. McMurdy. Thanks. The same to you. He's what you call a witness. Jan's future is in the palm of his hand. He's your witness, Jan. What have you got to say to him? 
A witness for what? I don't understand. Oh, Tom, do you have to talk business tonight? Yes. Jan. That accident was vehicular homicide, or manslaughter, or drunken driving, or all of them together, and you haven't got anything to say? It's all a melodrama anyway. Mr. McMarty, we're all friends. You might say we're all in this together. So let's lay it on the line. Who was driving that car the night of the accident? I mean, keeping in mind the proposition, see? Her, right there. Jim. You were driving the car. Who does he think he is? How do you know? Mr. Bollington, he's lying. Don't worry, Jan. Nobody could have seen it. They still don't know anything. Mr. McMurdy? Yeah. Well, here, here are your registration cards. I'm very particular about my records. See, now, I saw you all get in the car, and I saw you all drive out. And you, you was behind the wheel. Look, give me my money. Let me get out of here, will you? Oh, Jen, baby, what have you done? It's only his word against ours. That's all we need, Jan. His word. Dad, you've got to do something. You said he came for a check. Don't worry, darling. Your, your father will do everything that's humanly possible, won't you? You're going to, aren't you? You won't let me down. No. I'm not going to let you down. Not anymore. Of course not. You've never let anybody down. You've always been wonderful to all of us. Mr. Bollington, it, it's getting late now. Mr. I, McMurdy, I'm afraid you're not going to leave this house as rich as you thought. What are you trying to do? Cut me down? Jan, you might be a little richer when you leave. What is it? I'm through pulling strings. No thousand dollars. I'm not paying the bribe. Bribe? Bribe bri bri me? Listen, mister, all I said was that I thought I could identify the driver of the vehicle. And the only reason why I came here tonight is to make a positive identification. Well, I did, right there. And that's what I'm going to tell the police right away. Go ahead, tell the police. Right yes. Now. You're not going to send me to jail? Tom, you can't do this to her. You can't. Forgive me, Jan. I'm guilty, and you're going to have to suffer for it. Forgive me, please, please forgive me. It's not her fault. That's right. It wasn't entirely her fault. It's mine, too. I tried to excuse myself, but I can't. Maybe it's too late to do any good. But I know you won't begin to grow until you learn to accept the responsibility for your own actions. The world isn't just your oyster, it's everyone's. I didn't teach you that, did I? Oh, Dad. Believe me, Jan, I love you. And I hope you'll forgive me. <laughs> Whether you know it or not right now, I love you. Daddy. Forgive me. Forgive me. Daddy. Oh, it must be some other way. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. 